here we are in a Minecraft world. And you can see it's nighttime. Uh, this world happens to be a coding tutorial, so there's my agent there. But that's not what we're here to see. Uh, if I click Escape from within my world and go to Settings, uh, there are three different ways to get into Settings. And depending on where you are when you open Settings, you'll actually get a few different options. So this is the in-game way of getting to Settings. Notice uh, if I'm under Game, and I scroll down to the bottom. The last thing on the list is show classroom settings. And even if I turn that on, I scroll down, um, there's nothing under my classroom settings. Okay, so this is not the way to get into settings. So I wanna show you that one up front because you're bound to do that. So hopefully this will kind of drill that into your head. So I am going to, rather than resume game, I'm gonna save and exit. So I'm gonna get out of this game. And then we're going to go into My World Library. Uh, this is a new device for me, so I don't have much in here except this one world that I created today. So here's the world that I want to export. And if I click on it, but I don't click Play to go into it, but I click Settings from here. So I'm outside the world. I've chosen that world, and I want to go into the settings for that world. Now when I scroll down to the right, first of all, I, I don't have that list of um, categories on the left. All I have is my game settings. If I scroll down to the bottom, underneath the classroom settings, you see I now have export world. And that's our goal. We do want to export this world, and you'll see it happens very quickly. Uh, but I need to choose where to save it. And I am actually going to save it, rather than saving to my desktop, I have my County OneDrive synced to this device, and we'll show you how to do that in a moment. Uh, this is actually my personal device, so I also have my personal OneDrive on here. But uh, so we're pretending I am at school right now. So I have my school OneDrive account, and I can scroll down to my Microsoft and Minecraft folder and actually just saved this a moment ago, but we'll see what happens when I do it again. It already exists. Do you want to replace it? Yes. In this case, I do. So boom, it's already done. I've already exported it. So let me show you where that is. I go to my files. Again, because I have this synced to my device, I am in my... Anne Arundel County OneDrive, Microsoft folder, Minecraft folder, and there it is. Okay, that's the world that I just loaded. And this is the icon for um, Minecraft Education Edition World, and it's an MC World file. So you cannot open an MC World file in other versions of Minecraft, whether that's on another device. It, it's only the Windows 10 edition. Uh, I'm sorry, it, it is also on uh, Apple. So Windows 10 or Apple, but it is specifically the Minecraft Education Edition. All right, so how did I get it here on my drive? Uh, well, before we talk about that, let's, let's assume you don't have that, or let's assume you wanna get it to your Google Drive. You'll just save it to your device. Okay, once you have it saved to your device, then you can go out to ClassLink and choose your OneDrive, your Google Drive. Uh, if you're using Google, you would then come in here and choose to upload it. And if you are using OneDrive, uh, same thing, just choose to upload. But right next to the upload is actually a sync button. So the way that I got my OneDrive to be a folder on my device is I used that sync button and I just sort of followed the steps on there. Uh, so students and teachers can both sync their OneDrive to a device. Uh, teachers can also sync their Google Drive to a Windows 10 device, but students cannot. So uh, if this is something that students are doing, uh, if, uh, if this is the only thing that you would be syncing to your desktop for, it's probably not worth it. Just come into Google or Microsoft and, and just upload it. But uh, there, uh, if the students are going to use the same device on a regular basis, it might be worth doing the sync there just to save a step. All right, so once it is saved here, uh, now when I get home, I go to my Google Drive or my OneDrive, and I go and find that same file. And I'm actually going to choose a different file this time because I know that one is already on this machine. I want to show you what happens when you choose a world that's not currently on your device. So OneDrive doesn't know what to do with this file other than download it. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to download this other Minecraft world to my device. So this is what you would do at home. You say where you want it to save to. Uh, downloads folder is just fine. 
Oh, I must have clicked it twice. All right, so we don't need that anymore. I already have it saved twice down here. So I'm gonna click the little carrot, the little arrow right here. Rather than clicking on 3D printer, I'm actually gonna click on the arrow and show in folder. And what's handy about that is if this is not where I actually want it to be, maybe I don't wanna keep it in my downloads folder, by clicking on that arrow and seeing where it is, now I can move it to a better spot. I'm gonna just drop this one on my desktop. Okay, so let's say this is, again, I have two copies of it. Let's say this is the one I just moved to my desktop. Well, let's not say that, let's actually go there. When I double click on this, uh, it, because I have Minecraft Education Edition downloaded on this device or installed on this device, uh, it knows that this type of file needs to be opened with that. So if I go back to Minecraft, you'll see, hey, it's already imported that. And here I am in this world. This is actually a pretty cool world. This is, this is the inside of a 3D printer. So this world is designed so that anything that you build on this build plate can be exported using this structure block in the corner. Uh, Immersive Minds is the company that made this world. So this structure block is already programmed so that um, this is 32 blocks long, 32 blocks wide, and 32 blocks high. So you have all of that space to be able to export. So anything you build here you can export in a format that is uh, readable by a 3D printer. All right, so let's say you have taken your world home, you've imported it, and then you're done with the changes you want to make at home and you want to bring it back to school. You're again, going to save and exit, and this is just a repeat of everything we've already done with one exception. Now that I'm outside my world, when I go in there, to export it again. I already have this file with the same name already saved on my cloud drive, but now I've made some changes to it. So at this point, you need to change the name. Okay, so this is uh, familiar with people my age. Before the cloud, this is how we imported and exported files. Like we, we did this kind of on a regular basis, and you'd have to do things like you know, put today's date on there. And then tomorrow, if you're gonna bring it home, again, you're gonna add tomorrow's date there. And that way you can keep track of which is your most recent file. And uh, if you keep doing this over and over again, you'll find you'll have multiple files. So you just go back eventually and delete the older ones. Those also serve as backups if uh, you mess something up really bad on here. So uh, you probably don't wanna delete all of them, but maybe keep the last one as a safety measure. And that's it. Um, so once you save this new one, now I go back to school. And then when I get to school, I'm going to import the newer one. So if I go to the same computer that I worked on at school yesterday, I'm already going to have Agent to the Rescue on that computer. I'm now going to import Agent to the Rescue 2 or Date or whatever, whatever you did to modify that name. And then you'll end up having both of them here. And you can always go in and delete the older one right here. So one way to import a world into Minecraft is for us to do it completely from the cloud to our device. So when we are on the cloud, we download it, and then from our device, we click on that file, and Windows 10 is smart enough to know this is an MC world file. It must open in Minecraft education. So it imports it into your worlds. The other way, is to be within Minecraft Education Edition and choose import. So we're gonna do that right now. And it also opens that same familiar Windows Explorer window. And from there, you simply choose where the file is that you want to import. And I'm actually going to use this one. So it's now importing the refugee crisis, which is a very large file. Uh, it's literally about 25 times larger than the last one I imported. So it is taking a little bit longer to import. Okay, so it is now imported, which means I should be able to see it under view my worlds. And here it is, I click play. Now that world will open. Okay, so that's the second way to import. We can do it from outside of Minecraft, or you can be inside of Minecraft and also import. 
Okay, so that is importing and exporting worlds in Minecraft, along with some Google Drive and OneDrive syncing information thrown in for fun. So, uh, hey, have fun with this. And uh, we do also have uh, a Teams here in Anne Arundel County. If you go to Microsoft Teams, we actually have a Minecraft team that is open to the public. Uh, I do have a separate channel for students. This was originally a team that I made for teachers learning how to use it. So I'd like to keep it mainly for that, but we do have separate channels within that team for students who wanna share what they're doing in Minecraft. So you are welcome to load cool or interesting things that you're doing on there. And uh, this just kind of becomes a library of ideas for other people in the districts. There again, there's our students channel, which is brand new and yep, nobody's quite joined yet. So have fun with Minecraft. Please use it for good. And thanks for watching our tutorial.